Hey Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. Cooler Masters released a stack of new all-in-one liquid coolers and you guys have been asking us about them for quite a while, so in regular old Gear Seekers fashion, I'm gonna show you guys how to install them. Well, at least one. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to install the brand new Cooler Master PL240 Flux on Intel-based desktop systems. Let's jump in. This video is for demonstration purposes only. This video is not a review of this cooler. Every system, motherboard, case, and fan placement and setup is different. So make sure you research what will fit in your case before buying any parts for any PC builds. So let's talk about a few of those things. Now, this guide is to give you the fundamental idea of how to install the Cooler Master PL240 Flux on an Intel-based desktop motherboard. This will include every Intel desktop platform from the past 12 or so years. So the steps for LGA 11.5X, 1200 and 1700 are essentially the same. The only difference here is going to be the backplate. This basically includes every Intel socket you're gonna ask about in the comments as well. So make sure you watch this entire video before asking any questions because chances are, I'm gonna answer those inevitable questions in this video. With saying that, let's answer some of those questions right off the bat. The motherboard in this video is the Gigabyte B660M Aorus Pro AX DDR4. The case used is the Fantax Eclipse P400A and the CPU is the Intel Core i5-12400. These parts were chosen purely for demonstration purposes only. This video is not a discussion about pricing or performance of this cooler at all. It's purely to show you how to install it. The case was chosen as it's one of the most popular cases on the market and it is one of the easiest cases for us to film with. We're not going to do an AMD version of this video right now. We will release a version of that later this month. So if you're watching this in the future, there's probably going to be a link in the description to that video in the bottom of this video. So yes, it will work with almost every Intel and AMD CPU and motherboard combo you're going to ask about in the comment section from the last 12 or so years. Yes, the fan placement in this video is correct, but it does depend on your case and the clearances of your case. Yes, this cooler and fans have RGB and it is addressable RGB. No, your motherboard does not require RGB to use the lighting of this cooler and the fans. You can use the included controller instead that plugs into the USB on your motherboard. Yes, both fan cables from each of the fans need to be plugged in because either the fans won't spin or they won't light up. Yes, you can put whatever fans you like on this cooler. It doesn't really matter, but make sure you do your research first though. Yes, everything you're seeing in this video for this installation is included on the box. Yes, this guide also applies to the Cooler Master PL360 Flux version of this cooler as well. You can use this as a reference for that cooler. No, it doesn't matter if the tubes go up or down. And yes, I'm aware of the Gamers Nexus video you're gonna use as an argument, however, if you watch that video properly, Steve also states that it's not really important because it depends on the case and the cooler that you're actually using. Yes, it will work with AuraSync, Mystic Light, Polychrome RGB and RGB Fusion. No, we are not covering software configuration because at this point in time, Cooler Master software is just not good. No, the thermal paste is not pre-applied. You will need to apply it yourself. Yes, the pump top logo is rotatable. No, you do not ever need to fill up the cooler before use. You never have to change your liquid. You actually don't need to do anything at all in regards to the cooling system at all. Just install it, put it on the CPU, and you're good to go. But let's see what's in the box. All right, ladies and gents, here it is, the Cooler Master Master Liquid PL240 Flux. Let's take a look at what's in the box. First up, we've got a box full of all of the things. Here's the user manual, which we're just not going to use in this video. There's the back plates, the RGB cables, and the thermal paste. There's also all of the mounting hardware for every type of socket. We will only be using the Intel stuff in this video because that's the point of this guide. There's also two PWM fans. They both have addressable RGB as well. There's also the RGB controller, the PWM fan splitter, and the power cable for that RGB controller. And this is the cooler itself. It's a 240 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler. There's two cables that come off the pump top which need to be plugged in, but we'll get to all of that in a second. Now, this is all of the required mounting hardware that we're going to need for the installation here. So we've got a backplate, we've got the brackets that 
go onto the pump top. We've got four bolts, four standoffs to go into the back plate. We've got eight fan screws, four screws to attach the brackets to the pump top and some thermal paste. All right, let's start off with installing the retention brackets on the pump top. You'll notice there is a slit cut into the side. All you need to do is slide the bracket into the slit on the side of the pump top, locate these screws. These are the really small mounting screws and you wanna fasten two screws in each side of the retention system. Once you've done that, you wanna repeat that process. To install the other brackets, the same deal, slide it into place, get the screws, screw them in, and we should be good to go. Bob's your uncle. This is a good time as any to remove the sticker on the cold plate. If you leave this on, you will have very bad thermal performance, so make sure you remove this sticker. Okay, let's get into the backplate installation. The way I recommend doing this is putting the backplate on a flat surface and lowering the motherboard onto the backplate itself. Now, this is only really applicable if the motherboard is out of your system before you've built it, but you can apply this to it being inside of the case too. You wanna to locate the four mounting bolts. They look a little something like this. What you wanna do is lightly finger tighten them in each of the corners. Don't put too much force on them. If you over tighten them, you're going to cause damage to your board and it's going to be very difficult to take apart if you need to remove them later. Now, make sure everything is mounted tight enough and everything's mounted correctly. Even flip the board over just to see that the back plate's installed correctly. And then we can move on to the fan and radiator installation. So what you want to do is locate eight fan screws. They look a little something like this. You'll want to locate both of the fans. And what we're going to do is talk a little bit about radiator orientation. Now you can go tubes down, which is preferable. You can also go tubes up if your case can only do it this way and if the tubes aren't long enough. But in this instance, we're going to go tubes down because we've got plenty of room for activities in this case. So what we're going to do is then put the radiator inside the case and align it in the desired position. Then we're going to get the fan screws. We're going to put them through the hole of the fan frame and we're going to screw the fan to the radiator through the case. And you want to rinse and repeat that process until all eight fan screws are installed and so the radiator doesn't move around. Now, what we're going to do then is pass the fan cables through to the back of your system. This makes it easier for cable management and plugging everything in a little bit later on in the video. Now, let's talk thermal paste application. Locate the Master Gel Pro that comes with this cooler. This is always a contentious subject when installing coolers, but for LGA 1700, I would recommend just putting a nice thin line down the center of the IHS on your CPU. This is different for other CPUs, but for this one in particular, I would recommend this technique here. What you're wanting to do then is make sure that sticker is off the cold plate. We did go through this before, but you know, we're just double checking just in case you, you weren't paying attention. You want to locate four of these nuts, I mean these nuts, <laughs> and we're going to lower the pump top onto the screws that we put through into the back plate a little bit earlier on in the video. And the best way to do this is you can finger tighten these. Uh, you don't need to use a screwdriver, you can, but just make sure you do not over tighten this. And I would recommend doing this in a diagonal pattern because it spreads the thermal paste more evenly and the mounting pressure more evenly as well. And I recommend this for all coolers, not just this cooler in particular. Once we've done that, let's sort out the pump top and fan wiring. We want to locate the PWM fan splitter. This allows both of the fans to be plugged in on a single connector on your motherboard. This end here is the end that we're going to plug into your motherboard. You want to locate a fan header that's labeled either CPU fan or something similar to that. I would recommend passing the cable through the back to the front if you can and you want to locate the header, plug it into the CPU fan header if it's labeled like that on your motherboard. Then we've got two more cables that come off the pump top itself. Pass the RGB cable through to the back. This is going to make it a little bit easier later on in the video. The PWM connector for the pump itself, what you'll want to do then is locate a header labeled something like CPU Opt or Water Pump and plug it straight into that. 
All right, let's go to the back of the system and find that PWM splitter cable and get the PWM cables from the fans that we passed through a little bit earlier and connect them up. And that's basically it. Now the cooler will pump fluid through the cooler and the fans will spin, but we need to take care of the lighting. Now this is the recommended RGB setup I would recommend. Locate the three-way addressable RGB splitter cable. What we're going to do then is plug this end directly into the motherboard so you can use your motherboard software to control the lighting. Locate a three pin five volt addressable RGB header on your motherboard and plug that end directly into your motherboard just like that. Now with the splitter cable, pass the rest of them through to the back side. And what we're going to do then is plug the fans straight into the RGB splitter. They'll only plug in one way, so it's pretty hard to make a mistake here. And once we're done with that, we can move on to something that is uh, kind of recent with Cooler Master Coolers. So they've got cable clips now. So basically the point of these is you put them on the top of the connectors and it will lock them into place. And if we actually then try to tug on the connectors, they don't come unplugged. So you don't need to use electrical tape or anything like that to hold these connectors in anymore. Now, this is the way you would use the RGB controller. So locate your RGB controller, then locate the USB cable. What we're going to do then is locate a USB header on your motherboard. This is exactly what it looks like. It'll be labeled USB or USB 2.0. Plug this end of it into your motherboard directly. We're going to plug the USB cable into the port that is labeled USB on the RGB controller. And this only plugs in one way. Then locate the power cable for the RGB controller. Then what we're going to do is plug in the power connector, which is a little two pin connector. Push it in until you feel it or hear it click. And then locate a SATA power connector from your power supply and plug the other end in and we should be good to go. There's two ways to do this. You can plug all three cables, so the two fans and the pump top into the controller directly, which is a way to control things individually in the software, which we're not covering in this video, or you can use that three-way addressable RGB splitter. So you only need to use one port on the controller and you can leave them free for other things you want to control with this controller. Another thing to take into consideration is if the logo on the pump top has moved around, you can change the logo orientation. And lastly, what we're going to do is visit our friend over at Peel Corp and pull that plastic off. And ladies and gentlemen, if everything went to plan and you followed all of our steps, it should look a little something like this. I think I covered pretty much everything in this video. If you've got any questions, feel free to head on over to our Tech Help Discord or drop a comment down below. But make sure you read the comment section because probably myself or someone else would have answered your question already. So take that into consideration before asking any questions. I only say this not to sound mean or whatever, but just so you don't waste your time asking a question. Anyways, guys, if you like this video and this video helped you, please like and subscribe or consider like supporting us by using the join button or getting early access to videos on Floatplane or joining us over on TikTok as well because we're doing a lot of stuff over there now as well. If you like this video, you know, subscribe, do all the things that YouTubers tell you what to do and everything. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak, we seek, and I really do help. Yeah. <laughs> I really do help. <laughs> I was trying to say, I really hope this video helped you guys with your journey into installing a liquid cooler in your PC. Thanks for watching. I really do help. I really do help. <laughs> this is what happens when I don't read the script. <laughs>